Welcome back to Car Coach Reports. I'm Paul Fix the Third, and I had an excellent opportunity to talk on live TV about autonomous vehicles and what's happening with them. Regulations are changing right now, and you need to know what to expect. But before we jump right into it, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to this video to get automotive news as it happens. Plus, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Maybe you've heard of Caligen and its benefits, but you haven't tried it yet. Here's why you should. Calogen is a unique protein that naturally declines as we age, and you can improve your levels significantly by boosting your bone strength and soothing joint pain. And it minimizes wrinkles and cellulite, enhances hair follicle thickness, and even helps reverse nail damage. I started seeing changes in just a few weeks. For my viewers, there's an incredible deal available offering up to 45% off this bone, joint, and ligament restoring formula. Just head over to getnativepathcollagen.com slash Lauren. That's getnativepathcollagen.com slash Lauren for that special 45% off and free shipping. The Department of Transportation said Thursday it would ease some safety regulations for the development of self-driving vehicles. The move aims to help the U.S. maintain dominance in the industry globally. And the Transportation Secretary specifically said slashing red tape would help the U.S. in the innovation race with China. Joining us to discuss is Paul Fix III, Car Coach Reports automotive journalist. Good to see you this morning, Paul. The move outlines a couple of changes which are most significant to you at this time. What stands yeah, out to absolutely. you? Absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of red tape going on when it comes to autonomous vehicles because there's a lot of factors that people haven't really considered for a long time. First of all, I would say, before we dig into the actual regulations, the technology is not ready yet. Um, there's five levels of autonomous driving, and right now, the average vehicle is at level two, which means almost everything's in development. So right now, it's a technological war to get to level five first. So just briefly, level two means that it still requires driver intervention. Level three is um, what Mercedes is working on right now, which means the car is one step closer to actually driving itself. It has some amount of intelligence. Level four, the car completely drives itself without any driver intervention needed, but you still have a steering wheel and pedals. And level five is no steering wheel and pedals, like, a, like an amusement ride. So just so we understand where we are at first, we are very far away from actual autonomous driving. But the regulations that were taken down, there's a lot of safety concerns and uh, technological requirements from the government. And if you're importing an autonomous car, then there's actually less regulation for you than if you're building it domestically. And so by taking away some of uh, some of these regulations, some of them are very nitpicky, you know, a subsection of a, of a law that was put in with, you know, some other bill, and it, it becomes very uh, granular. But the high level is by taking away some of this regulation and red tape, allowing American companies to develop the autonomous vehicles here uh, with a little bit less restriction, we might actually be able to catch up to some of our competitors around the world. And Waymo is a great example. Volkswagen happens to be working with them, and they're producing it here in the U.S., and they're testing them in places like Los Angeles and Arizona. So there's already a lot of development going on, actually on the street and in certain cities, like I mentioned in Arizona and, and in Los Angeles. You can get a taxi ride in a fully autonomous vehicle, well, mostly autonomous vehicle. Yeah, so with everything that you've laid out right now and most, um, most of these vehicles being at level two at the moment in the U.S., how safe or dangerous are they right now? That's a great question because we don't really know. Uh, we, there's not enough studies done on it. We don't have enough data to know exactly how safe these are. We do know that there's been plenty of incidents involving these vehicles. They've been news stories um, over the last many years where – um, I, uh, an autonomous taxi uh, hit a, an older woman in the street in Arizona, and unfortunately, she did not live. Um, it's hit dogs. It's uh, been stuck in the street. So uh, I've heard stories of people in New York City that don't like the autonomous vehicles. They'll put a cone on the hood, and the car will freak out, doesn't know what it's supposed to do. The sensors are going uh, everywhere because it thinks that it's hit something, so it doesn't move at all and just sits in the middle of traffic. So it's not intelligent in the way that a human driver is and so 
um, there's actually a great situation. One of my friends had gotten a taxi and it was raining too hard. And the autonomous taxi stopped in the middle of the, well, not in the middle of the road, it pulled off to the side. And it said, hold on, we are getting a taxi with a driver to come and pick you up to complete your trip. So okay. even the car knows that it's not ready. And, and wow, so fascinating. when you're talking about snow and rain and uh, wind or really bad traffic or bad roads or roads with um, lines that aren't painted very well, the, these cars, unfortunately, they just don't um, they don't perform to the level that we expect them to. So I think we're still a long way. And Paul, just in the last 30 seconds that we have, considering these issues and the uh, the records so far of some crashes and, as you mentioned, one fatality. Uh, who's liable here when there's nobody driving? When it comes to the law, how do we parse that out? It's like you read my mind. That was the next thing. So um, insurance companies have no idea what to do here. And the liability comes down to, I guess, what the manufacturers decide is the best course of action here because um, there's no regulation at all for who's actually liable. There's no standard for um, if you are, you're coming up to a street crossing and there's somebody in the way. And so the car has to determine, do I hit the brakes or do I turn into a, a wall or another car? And, and there's no standardization here. And as we, as we develop more over time, we'll figure that out. But right now, insurance companies don't want to have much to do with this. It's too expensive. The, li the liability would be caught up in court for years. So right now it's kind of up in the air, but okay. we'll figure out where it goes when uh, we take another step towards level three, level four. Watching all this closely. Thank you so much for your coming on today. Paul Fix the Third. Good to speak with you. Thanks. Now, unfortunately, what I did not get to mention in that interview was that hacking is also a really big issue. With the skills of hackers going up every day, hacker groups, hacktivist groups, and the lack of security on these vehicles, the chances that somebody could hack into your vehicle is actually pretty good. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to target you directly. That doesn't mean that you individually are at risk, but it does mean that there's always the possibility that you could randomly be chosen, or if you are being targeted, it's not very hard to hack into a vehicle. There's already been plenty of instances of this happening. We've talked about it on the channel before, where there have been a, a Jeep that was uh, hacked remotely. Somebody was able to uh, start a Kia without even unlocking the door. Uh, situations like not, not something so dramatic like in the Fast and Furious movie where the cars are driving out of the uh, parking garage. But with a fully autonomous system, if a hacker is good enough, this is something that could actually happen down the line. There's so much movement on trying to get the technology up to speed and as advanced as possible without thinking about the privacy and security concerns, especially when already as it is, your car is listening to you and sending all of that data back to the manufacturers, the insurance companies, and anybody else who has a hand in the development of that technology. We've also talked about that before on this channel. So I, I wanted to kind of wrap up that whole autonomous vehicle conversation and saying this is not something that's happening anytime soon. There are still some things we need to be concerned about, and we are tracking it anytime that there's an update. And so if this law changes and there actually is some movement on new autonomous vehicles coming to market and being tested, then we'll tell you about that as it happens. Um, the most recent news that we did here on that front is Volkswagen buses, uh, the new ID Buzz, all electric, uh, inspired by the old bus from the uh, 70s and, and famous from the 70s. Um, they're working with Uber to make fully autonomous uh, taxis. So that's that's the first step here. But again, there's companies like Waymo and they've not made them foolproof. There's so many issues still to go with them. So almost every autonomous vehicle for the last however many years they've been doing this, it's definitely more than 10. I don't want to give an exact number, but they have not gone out of the testing phase. There's no marketable version of a self-driving vehicle. The closest, like I mentioned before in the interview, is Mercedes at level three, where we need level four to be fully autonomous and level five with no steering wheel to be like 
in iRobot, if you've watched that movie with Will Smith, where the cars all just drive themselves, no steering wheel. So that's what's going on here in your automotive world. Thank you so much for uh, keeping up with us. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, share. Links for everything is down below if you want to check out our podcast, Lauren's book, and everything else that we're doing on the internet. You can follow me at PaulFix3. I primarily post on Instagram, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.